So uh, let's welcome uh, Egon, who will uh, describe how he is trying to improve the coverage of chemical compounds in Wikidata. Yep. Yeah, thank you. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, this is not right. Sorry. That was the wrong slide deck. How about this? <laughs> this one actually says Wikidatacon. Uh, um, sli slightly different slides. Uh, um, okay, so yeah, um, coverage uh, and uh, uh, correctness, uh, accuracy, uh, quality, if you like. Um, and um, the other thing here is what makes it different from some of the other things that we've seen at this uh, at the Wikidatacon is how I do this quality uh, and at the coverage actually. So I'm actually uh, taking advantage here of my background, which is in cheminformatics, uh, which is something that we use in our uh, in our research. And um, with cheminformatics, with understanding the chemical structures, what we will see in a moment, we can do things that we cannot do with the regular tool set uh, that we have, like shape expressions, quality constraints, and sorts. Um, now, one of the interesting things of chemistry um, is that uh, chemical structures uh, are sometimes the same, sometimes not the same, depending on what you want to know. Uh, and this uh, this slide uh, reflects that a bit. And what we see here is, uh, well, biologically the same compound, but uh, chemically two different compounds. But at a biological level, so in the cell, they uh, they're in equilibrium, uh, and you will not be able to really distinguish between them, unless you are looking for a particular type of biology, like reaction mechanisms. Um, another interesting thing about uh, Wikidata and Wikipedia is, is that we have things like yeah, long-chain fatty acids, chemical concepts which are not a specific compound but actually a class of compounds. Now this class can be based on uh, uh, similar uh, features in the molecules, so like in, in the case of the long-chain fatty acids, they all have a long-chain uh, 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 long fatty and an acid group. In other cases, uh, the class is based more on uh, the biological functionality, uh, like a certain type of inhibitor, like an ACE inhibitor. Uh, and this, this, this introduces a lot of interesting uh, uh, things, uh, partly because of this close link with, uh, with Wikipedias. And uh, one of the things that we see is that um, a, a Wikipedia may have a chem box for a particular compound, but actually be about a compound class, uh, resulting to um, a slightly different um, concept of what the two things are actually meaning, and the side link being more complicated. So, um, I, I, we need this for, uh, for, uh, uh, for, uh, for understanding the biology. So the research in our group is uh, understanding the living cell. Uh, the systems biology here, uh, describing the biological processes. We have a pathway database for that, uh, wiki pathways, and if we look at the chemistry in there uh, of the small molecules, um, that chemistry is uh, sometimes described in a lot of detail, sometimes in less detail, pretty much like this Wikipedia Wikidata link that we just had, resulting in uh, basically links to a lot of different databases with slightly different focuses. Uh, some databases like lipid maps and uh, the human metabolome database, they're very much focused on the biology. Whereas in a database like, uh, like CABI, uh, that's very much focused on uh, the, the, the chemical entities. Um, so we try to bridge that, and uh, that's uh, two, three years ago uh, gave us a very interesting insight that if you look at the lines here, where in blue we have the total number of uh, small molecules we have in these pathways, and the number in red that we can match to that, there is this gap, and this gap is complicated chemistry. Uh, also partly uh, things missing in Wikidata. So therefore the need for data completeness and, and, and data uh, quality. Um, <coughs> 
And uh, here we have an example. This actually is a curation report of, uh, of, of yesterday. Uh, these are still things that we have in pathways, but that we do not know what the equivalent thing is in, uh, in Wikidata. And one of the things here uh, that I'm uh, picking out here is trigolactone. Uh, this is a class of compounds. Um, yeah, we, so we, we, we have that in one of our pathways, uh, this particular pathway over there. Um, and um, so you start matching this to Wikidata and Wikipedia. And there actually is for this compound a Wikipedia page with uh, these six structures, images, name, no links, nothing, nothing in Wikipedia, just this information, not machine readable. Um, <clears throat> so based on the name, I can, uh, can actually find f uh, three out of the six uh, of these compounds in Wikidata, not linked, not classified. So if we look at the class of stringolactones, of which these six are examples, Wikidata did not give us anything. So that is the kind of curation that I'm interested in. Uh, on the right here, uh, that page is actually, it's pretty much empty, but that's exactly what uh, Scolia is showing for this class of chemical compounds. So Scolia is one of the tools that I've been using to do this, uh, to do this curation. Um, this missing classification is a bit of information, uh, uh, information missing in Wikidata, but then we can add uh, this classification. If we can retrieve that from some source, as we will see with lipid maps later, we can automate adding these missing links, if we understand the, uh, the, the, the chemistry. So this diagram over here, uh, we have fatty acid over there again, and the, uh, let's see, the long chain fatty acid over here that we saw on the previous, uh, one of the previous slides, very long chain of fatty acids and a number of other uh, fatty acids. This kind of information helps us see, uh, get grip of the, the chemistry in, uh, uh, in Wikidata. Um, Scolia can visualize the 2D structure. Uh, now this thing is actually automatically generated from the chemical structure in uh, Wikidata, uh, uh, on the fly creating a scalable vector graphics. Uh, <coughs> Sorry. With the uh, stereochemistry annotation there to, uh, to help the chemist uh, see uh, the completeness of the data because also the stereochemistry might be missing. Uh, we also get an overview in Scolia of related compounds uh, based on the NG key, where the first block basically indicates how the atoms are connected, and the second, uh, second column indicates uh, things like stereochemistry uh, and things like uh, which isotopes are in there. Uh, for example, uh, a C11 instead of a C12, or a C13 instead of a uh, C12. The uh, last number of the last uh, letter over here actually indicates the charge. So that's the example that we saw earlier between uh, the citric acid and the uh, acitrate. Or was it acetic acid and acetate? Um, <coughs> so uh, by putting in some, so a bit of domain knowledge, we can do a, a lot more uh, making sense of what we have in Wikidata. Um, a bit more uh, about, uh, about Scolia is that, uh, about data completeness, with the physical chemical properties, the literature, those are all things that we want to have access to. But it only works if we can find uh, the right chemical, uh, chemical in Wikidata. Um, now, we started using Wikidata in a number of our projects, so Wikipathways was one of them. Uh, this is another project where, uh, in the area of the nano safety uh, risk assessment, where they use uh, OCD testing guidelines and uh, using uh, Wikidata here to make an overview of the experiments. And this means that we can now actually uh, start annotating articles where these protocols have been used. Uh, uh, <clears throat> and in this way, we get a better insight in the quality of literature as well. Uh, we get to see which, uh, which uh, th th these are uh, well-tested, established uh, experimental methods and an indication of uh, how good the data is that came out of that. Um, Another example, this is nanomaterials, uh, specific nanomaterials, um, uh, where there is a unique code. We've added that uh, with the same purpose of being able to track down literature about these nanomaterials. Uh, but again, uh, we need exact uh, descriptions. 
Now this is the, um, uh, the lipid maps classification and here we see an interesting thing and this has shown up in some, uh, some of the presentations uh, elsewhere as well. This idea that uh, some of the things that we have in Wikidata is not always matching the sources. So different ontological models, different ideas of, uh, of, of what a particular thing means. And uh, so if we look at the lipid maps, we have a lipid in, uh, in the middle and then a number of, of classes. And many of these are in Wikidata. But uh, here, uh, around uh, actually fatty acids and fatty acyls, uh, that's where there is a mismatch uh, causing something that should be actually purely hi uh, hierarchical, uh, actually sh uh, starting to show some loops uh, over there. A mismatch of two representations of uh, lipid chemistry. Um, now the goal of this work is not so much to reconcile this, but to visualize it so that we can understand what is going on and, uh, and correct things that are actually clearly wrong. Um, so, um, <coughs> um, the interesting thing about lipid maps is actually that the classification indi is indicated in the external identifier. So one of the things that I've been using is this uh, external numbers to make automat this automatic classification. Because everything that starts with an LMFA05 is actually an, uh, a fatty alcohol. So I can translate it into quick statements, push that into quick statements and get that annotated in, uh, in Wikidata. Um, Now, well, this, this slide is just, just reflecting uh, the advantage for lipid maps here, which I've been collaborating with them, because they get a lot of our data out of, uh, of, of Wikidata as well, uh, which we can cross-reference, which we can compare if it is, uh, if it is correct. Uh, lipid maps is a quite curated database, um, but uh, like everyone, actually uh, having trouble with, the, um, uh, with access to literature, the, uh, the amount of literature and filtering the uh, literature, getting to the right uh, articles. Um, shape expressions is probably something that you've seen. We have a few of them uh, for, uh, for chemistry now. Uh, this is the example for a racemic mixture. In a case of a racemic mixture, uh, you want to have uh, two parts in there. It's a mixture, so at least two chemical, uh, chemical entities need to be in there. Moreover, each of the has parts has to be a chemical compound. So this is another level of uh, yeah, way of way we can uh, curate the content. Now there have to be uh, more of them. We have quite a few different uh, chemical uh, concepts in Wikidata, like groups of co compounds. Uh, uh, there is a class that is uh, of structurally similar compounds, etc. Um, if you run a query like this, this case for the other one, uh, other schema that we have at this moment for, wiki, uh, for, for chemical elements, you can do the same thing. You can run that on a single item or you can run that on everything that is a chemical element. Uh, this is something um, uh, that I can very much recommend having a look at if you have not done so already. Now if we go to um, the, the automation of things, uh, here I'm using a, a tool called, uh, called Bioclips. This is something that we worked on uh, some, some 10 years ago. It's a platform for chemistry uh, and biology or cheminformatics and bioinformatics uh, aimed at automating things, um, uh, uh, in including visualization and sorts. But I've taken that uh, now and developed a number of scripts uh, that I can actually run on the command line, which makes it easier to automate things, as we will see in a moment, and doing all sorts of things. So, for example, the, the classification according to the lipid map identifiers, uh, that's this script. Uh, these scripts are all available from, uh, from this GitHub repository here. Um, and typically, I have them create quick statements because that gives me an additional check step after I created the quick statements and see, well, okay, what the, does the data actually look like? Um, annotation of uh, main subjects. Uh, this is this one is uh, is my script to uh, starting from a smiles uh, to actually add uh, chemical compounds that are not in Wikidata yet, which happens a lot. Um, so three or four weeks ago, I added five, something like 500 compounds, which a project was looking into, because these are compounds, uh, volatile compounds in in in, in oils. Um, this script adds the compounds. Um, they will later on add the annotation of which species that compound comes from and what the properties are. 
Um, BiteClips itself is based on the Chemistry Development Kit uh, uh, and a few other libraries. Uh, this, this allows me to do, uh, to do the chemistry. And this is a, a very well validated uh, toolkit. This Miles parser has been done by uh, John Mayfield. I uh, had a lot of, uh, have done a lot of validation against other uh, other tools, uh, and the quality is actually really high now, uh, uh, comparable or in some cases even better of commercial uh, cheminformatics tools. So giving me a lot of uh, 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 reassurance that the quality checking that we do. With, uh, uh, on, uh, with this tool on Wikidata is giving uh, interesting uh, results. Well, this is the quick statements. Uh, um, quick statements, Magnus's uh, work, of course. Um, uh, for uh, yeah, what happens if we take a smile, it calculates uh, the inchy and the inchy key. Uh, it even looks up uh, based on the inchy key if there's a popcam identifier and uses uh, the uh, the inchy key, the PubChem identifier, to see if this compound already is in Wikidata, and only if it uh, it's not already there, then it will actually create a uh, create statement. Um, a bit of automatic classification here uh, is, is an option. So if I'm adding a class of compounds, I can automatically indicate, well, these are all this, uh, this type of uh, compounds. And I can also indicate, uh, if needed, if there is a particular article where I got this information from automatically adding references. Um, well, this is what the quick statements output looks like for the uh, annotation of main subjects. Uh, you've probably seen that as well. Now, um, a newer thing that I started doing is actually doing reasoning on the data in Wikidata. So if I have the smiles, uh, then I can check the molecular formula, for example. I can check the inchy key. Um, at some point, what we're going to do uh, is uh, calculate uh, physical chemical properties and see if that matches uh, what is in Wikidata. Uh, uh, this will highlight uh, typos uh, uh, or the wrong units, for example. Um, at this moment, uh, so this is a run of this morning, what we see here is two tests actually failing, and this is an example of it. This is the inchy key that is computed from the isomeric smiles is different from the inchy key given in uh, the entry. Um, this can result from uh, uh, data being pulled in from different resources. So these are entries, uh, about 300 of them, in the 160,000 chemicals that we have in Wikidata. So it's a very small, small amount, really, where there is information and someone needs to look at it. Um, now, these are all uh, organic, uh, organic compounds. Uh, there are also uh, quite a few inorganic compounds where these things just work less well. Uh, but I found uh, in the other test uh, that is failing uh, immediately a couple of things that are very clearly wrong. Um, now, PubChem is a... Uh, a huge database, they do validation uh, as well. We're in the process of submitting Wikidata there, which, is, uh, which I'm really happy about. Uh, it's in the, in the last validation step at this moment. Um, and this will also mean that PubChem, uh, which has something like uh, uh, 100 million compounds, will actually link back to Wikidata. It already does this, uh, but via, via Wikipedia. <laughs> you recognize it? Um, with the aforementioned uh, issues there of con concept mismatches. Uh, so this will give us a second thing. And there, uh, also using the same BioClip scripts uh, or similar BioClip scripts, we get validation reports, again uh, indicating things that chemists should look at. Um, that basically wraps it up. Um, this is still work in progress. The article is in preparation. I've been working with, uh, with Finn here in Scolia uh, to help, uh, to support this validation. Um, we're writing up uh, the full work, but for now you can look up this, uh, this poster. The slides are on, uh, on the program of, uh, of this session, so you can look at the slides and look at the details. Um, and uh, uh, a quick acknowledgement, some of this work has been done by, uh, by a number of grants that I received. And thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you so much for this. I am an amateur, and um, so far I've been writing articles on the Arabic Wikipedia on different compounds. I have a little bit more than 70 articles about different compounds, just things I come across. 
And my question to you is, if I want to move my chemistry activity from Wikipedia to Wikidata, how can I help in a way that is very friendly to some, somebody who is a beginner in that field on Wikidata? Um, so if that compound is in Wikipedia, and uh, so sometimes there actually is a Wikidata page. I occasionally run into this as well. The last couple of months, not so much anymore, but this, mor this morning actually. Um, uh, and what I typically do then is uh, take the smiles from, uh, uh, from uh, the, the info box from that compound or use PubChem to look up the, uh, the smiles. Uh, check if the information is complete, particularly the stereochemistry. And then I use that, uh, that create uh, Wikidata item script uh, to uh, create quick statements for that compound. Um, if, that's, uh, if there already is a Wikidata item, I basically uh, just update um, this script, but rather than say create last, I replace the last with the Q code that that item already has, and then it complements uh, or it adds this information uh, based on uh, the information we had. Yeah, this is manual, um, um, the, uh, so you can you can copy paste a number of smiles, put it in a file, and uh, and and take that. Um, uh, extracting that information with Wikidata is not something I've uh, automated yet, but this this helps me. Uh, it, it it's a pretty fast process. I can show you later uh, how to use that software. Are there other questions? So I have one. Uh, do you make also an effort to, uh, in fact, make this more visible in this uh, bioinformatics community so that they m can start using the structured data? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actively doing that. So, so what, I, what I didn't mention in this presentation so much, but um, we saw that um, in well, at the summer at the start here, this overview of different databases. Uh, a similar plot, which I actually do not have on this, uh, this slide deck, is uh, the number of different identifiers uh, that chemical compounds have. And I've been working with a number of databases like uh, MassBank, uh, the, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, um, uh, uh, Comtox dashboard, um, I've added links out to the PDB database. So we ha I'm, I'm working with a no number of projects for, for pulling in uh, uh, additional information, uh, identifies and links out to other databases. Um, regarding uh, outreach, yes, uh, so that wrong slide deck that I was showing at the start, uh, that was actually a presentation two weeks ago at an open science meeting uh, around chemistry. Uh, I'm, I'm very much pushing, uh, pushing this. Um, and um, I, 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 I see a big future here. Uh, there's a lot of interest um, and um, yeah, making people aware of the CC0 license, that's typically the, 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 larger, uh, the larger problem. Uh, uh, so we have to um, pull in the information carefully. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, then we thank the speaker. <laughs>